I have fashion week fatigue. We are about to look at apartments. I wanna die. Like I want the floor to swallow me and never bring me up again. Another thing that I really love about New York is... But because I've reached a lot of goals of mine, I feel very scared. And I see you in a sec. When you try your best but you don't succeed When you get what you want but not what you need When you feel so tired but you can't sleep Stuck in river <laughs> Good day, good day! Hey guys, how is everybody? So it's New York Fashion Week. But I call this not New York Fashion Week because I don't know, I have Fashion Week fatigue and we're only at the beginning. I just feel like it's never ending. Like the second you finish, another thing starts again. You know, I decided that this New York Fashion Week, I'm obviously focused on my brand partners, but aside from that, I'm gonna focus on myself. I'm gonna focus on my projects that I'm working on. And I am working on a lot of exciting projects. Oh my God, so annoying when people say this. But you know, that's what really energizes me. And yesterday was day one and I had three events at night, which for me is like way too much. So everything happened like that one night. I am an introvert and an extrovert. So I can be both and I love being around people. But yesterday I was just drained. I was actually thinking about vlogging, but I was in a really bad mood. I was like, I should capture this, <laughs> you know, like let's get the full 360 Xenia. But now I'm so glad that I didn't because I was unbearable, okay? But yesterday I also realized something. Most of the times when I do events and I'm socializing, I'm like super excited to do it. But yesterday I I was literally dreading going out. And then I realized how hard it is for introverts. Like I only learned yesterday how hard it is to go outside, interact with like so many people when all you want to do is stay home. I just really, really wanted to stay home. And then when I was there, when I was at these events, I really enjoyed it. So it wasn't even that bad. It's just like the moment before I was like, oh, I can't do it. So you know I have a bit of fashion week fatigue. I am currently journaling and I think this vlog, I'm gonna take you with me around New York, but we're not really doing fashion week things. We'll do them, but only a little bit. And you know what I was also thinking about yesterday? I was thinking about that I feel like whenever you come online or you show something of yourself online, there's always this element of performance to it. And that's why it always feels a little bit fake. And yesterday I felt like a fraud because I was in this really bad mood and I was like, I mean, you experience me 20 to 40 minutes each week, right? But you don't experience me 24 seven. So whenever I have lows, I don't really show them because also it's like depressing to see people who are in a bad mood, you know? I could have like yesterday, I could have rented for like a long time, okay? <laughs> but then I'm like, okay, you only see me. I mean, not only, I. I try to show a little bit of like my lower moods but you know you still don't get the full picture and that's why I feel like a fraud but there's so much more to me than just this happy child but you know what I'm saying it's like a dilemma it's an oxymoron no, I have to say I'm really glad that I didn't show myself yesterday because that was unbearable. Literally, I wasn't bad. At one point, I just gave up on the day. Guys, you know what happened yesterday? I think that was the overkill when I just decided to quit that day. Like, I just went to bed in the afternoon. I was like, that's it. I missed my therapy session twice. Twice. First, it wasn't a calendar and... I forgot, I totally forgot, because it was not on the calendar. And then I emailed her and I was like, oh my God, I am so sorry. Of course you can like send me an invoice for the session, blah, blah, blah. I felt awful. Oh no, so I was, I was like, I'm really so sorry. Any chance you can meet me in like one or two hours? And she replied immediately, but I'm in New York and I have my MacBook here and I forgot to log into my email accounts because I'm always on my laptop, but here I have like a computer and on the computer I wasn't logged in, so I missed the email. I can't. That literally never happened before. I felt like the biggest loser and I hated myself. I hated myself for being so unorganized. I'm like, what is wrong with me? Yeah, I know. We have to be kind to ourselves and I agree. But do you know what? Today I woke up and I feel like a brand new 
person. I feel so well rested. I'm so grateful because yesterday wasn't my day. And you know what? I have that app it's called flow where i track my cycle and of course it was pms and i swear to god i can delete my calendar i can delete my watch i can like never hear of any moon faces ever again if i become like this i'm like cranky i just want to be in bed i am forgetful i'm chaotic i'm like in a bad mood and especially my appetite is out of control like guys I ate where I felt like my stomach is too little for the amount of food that I need. And I'm not saying I wasn't binge eating. I was literally just like my body was so hungry. I would eat like two fat dishes of pasta. I, I just couldn't stop eating. It was crazy. I know that my body sometimes needs more food than other times. And also, I'm so sorry to my boyfriend. Like, I don't know how he handles me while I have PMS. But I literally checked my flow app and it said, your period starts in three days. And I'm like, there we go there we go i swear the week before my period i am not a normal person at all at all <laughs> guys you don't understand the extent of my pms it's crazy but it's always like this so now i'm just i know it i also know by the way that i'm more likely to get sick the week before so today i'm taking my vitamins by the way don't tell me they're dirty because it's supposed to be like that creates that soft line. Suddenly, the world I used to know, I see it differently. You woke me from a dream, now here's reality. Baby, baby, you are really hurting me. Cause every time you tell me I'm good and bad, I'm doing fine. But nothing ever changed. in a good mood it happened yesterday and it happened today and every time it happens i'm like life feels like this <laughs> you know what i mean like waking up with a good mood is it's half of the rent okay and i don't know how it happens or why it happens oh my god i look insane but i'm not gonna ask questions i'm not gonna ask i just take it at face value and i'm grateful for it because it's so amazing it's such a good feeling i love it what are we doing today i have a little show but as you know this vlog is not about new york fashion week <laughs> so i'm gonna show you the before and the after this is my fit <laughs> uh, i just wanted to say I mean, you're gonna watch this later, but it doesn't matter when you watch it. I just wish you the most beautiful day ever. I wish you a lot of mornings where you wake up feeling like dancing. <laughs> um, and now, let's see. Lights will guide you home and ignite. I just want to show you a bit of New York, so... We're currently in Soho. Actually, I already recorded a video. And then something happened, like there was a technical error and it deleted everything and it made me kind of upset. I just realized that I have a crazy, crazy, how do you call it, like fear still. It's really incredible because I've been vlogging for a while now, but usually I'm in closed settings. And now going out in New York, 
On a Saturday afternoon is really exposure therapy, especially. But we're in Soho, right? So whenever I walk by like a group of really cool people, I just, I want to die. Like I want the floor to swallow me and never bring me up again. I'm so deeply embarrassed. <laughs> but this is exactly why we're doing this. Exposure therapy. I have to own it. But the way I cringe inside is just unbearable. Cringe is real. And that's why I'm owning it. <sighs> When did this become so hard? Okay, I want to show you my fit. This is my fit. I am wearing Miu Miu and Animal Maester. I also have a bag, but sometimes I struggle with wearing bags still. I'm feeling a little bit uncomfortable. I'm just gonna show you my neighborhood. Uh, there's this tower right over there at the very end, you know? The very, very, very end. We all wonder what this tower is because as you just saw, there are no... Nothing, like there's no window. So Jürgen, what is your conspiracy theory for? The tower? Yeah. I think it it's... Uh, they are testing virtual reality inside. So it needs to be dark. It's like the silo, you know, the TV series. The people inside don't know that there is an outside world. Crazy. But they don't have windows. So of course, like how would they know? Okay, I'm gonna tell you my conspiracy theory. I think this is the headquarter of the CIA. I am 59% sure. But also on the other hand, you know, if I was the CIA, I would actually make a building where I have fake windows. So that doesn't make sense. Debunked. <laughs> Let's continue. Yeah. We're now going to San Ambrose. If you've watched my other New York video, is it a stationary shop? Oh no, it's just an event with cupcakes. I thought it's stationary. If you've watched my other YouTube video, you've seen us eating our way through New York and one of it is San Ambrose. And we actually want to go there tonight because we have a Gucci event. Before that, I want to have dinner. So let's see if we can get a last minute reservation on a Saturday during New York Fashion Week. It already sounds impossible. I mean, New York to me is just one of the most beautiful cities ever. It's so beautiful. There's just something about the like, I, I don't even know how to explain it. I think if you're not familiar with New York, If you aren't familiar with New York, now you are. It is noisy, I have to admit. And you know what? I also see why it's not the most beautiful from a very like objective perspective. Because yes, there's trash everywhere. <laughs> but to be honest, I just feel like the energy of the city is so raw. Like the city itself is so raw and like everything is so real. Like New York doesn't pretend. Like yes, it's dirty, it's loud, it's packed. <laughs> but I just love it. There's something about everything. And also I feel like people in New York are so special. People who love New York, they may have nothing in common, but the love for New York. Like the diversity here in terms of people, characters, aspirations, everything. It's like nowhere else. I feel like it's a city full of Dreamers. Yeah, again. I just wanted to ask what do you love about New York? I really love that you can just walk out the door and really dive right into the city without <laughs> needing to get into a car or even drive somewhere with your bike or I don't know. You walk out the door and you're right in it. This is what I love so much. I love coffee, as you guys know. So there's a lot of coffee here to drink. So each time you go out, there's actually something happening which is maybe unexpected or you didn't think of. So it's super, super vibrant. Um, another thing that I really love about New York is all the helicopters flying on top of the city. Just kidding. But you know what's crazy in New York? We have so many random run-ins and like people that we know. Like the other day, you're gonna remember when you ran into like somebody you used to work with like 10 years ago. And this shit happens all the time, all the time. <sighs> My enthusiasm is sometimes coming out of me and I need to like tame it. But a good friend, I experienced some like wild thing and I looked at him and I was like, can you believe this happened? And he was like, you know what? New York is not real. It's not real. And this is so true. Like once you are aware, when? You're gonna tell me not to come closer, so rude. But they wanna see my pretty face. Yeah, he said New York isn't real. And since I have that saying in my head, I couldn't agree more. The city isn't real. It's not real. 
I'm just giving them the full New York experience with all the noise, all the dirt, all everything. It's one of these things like Taylor. You either get it or you don't. Guys, it's snack time. I don't know why, but the past days I've been so hungry. I mean, I told you why, but it just doesn't end. And I just want to eat all the time. You know the yeast? Let's see if they're so good. Mm, still super salty. Good morning, friends. What's the time? Can't make this up. Okay, make a wish. Love it. Wow, that was incredible. So I had meetings started at like 7.30. It's only been like four hours, but I'm so exhausted. It's been these meetings where you actually have to use your brain you know no but it was a lot of like brain work and i can always feel when i do that after a few hours i'm just drained i'm like i need to take a nap like my brain i can literally feel when i use my brain like a lot like when it's it sounds so stupid i know but i literally need to eat more like i can feel how it's really physical for me the other day i had one day that was so intense and i literally texted <laughs> I probably shouldn't say this, but <laughs> I literally texted my dad. I'm like, dad, is it possible that I overuse my brain? Because I could feel it buzzing. It's so weird. Anyhow, so I'm getting ready. Oh my God, I do look, I also look exhausted. Like I don't look good. Today we're extra slow, okay? No, but um, what I wanted to say, we are about to look at apartments. And you know what? I love my apartment a lot. Like the one we're currently in. I love it so much. So much. I actually love it too much because the problem is I love it so much that sometimes I don't want to leave my house. I think I told this during Vlogmas. I don't want to leave my house. I could just be here. It feels like a safe cave. <laughs> I feel so safe here. But the way it works in New York, if you're not familiar, like most of the leases are only for one or two years and ours is always for one year. So we always have to ask to renew it. And I actually asked a few weeks ago, but we still haven't heard back. And now I panic because the lease is up at the end of the month and today it's literally mid-February and I still haven't heard back. So I'm panicking because I've heard too many times how landlords wouldn't renew the lease. It really stresses me out because I don't want to move but at the same time I need to have a backup plan in case we have to move. Because let me tell you one thing, I'm not leaving New York. I love New York so much. Like I don't know if I mentioned this already, you probably haven't heard me say this. No, but I really love it and like if I can, I just like, I would love to never leave it. You know what I mean? But for this case, I hit up my real estate friend and I told him, I'm like, listen, you need to show us what's available on the market because if I have to move within like a few days, I'm screwed. I need to have a backup plan. It's like the German in me who comes through. I also really wonder, I mean, worst case, I guess, is that everything needs to go to storage, which would be a nightmare. I mean, come on, did you see the amount of stuff that I have? Let's keep fingers crossed that we don't have to move and that I'm just gonna show you a few cute apartments. We're looking at one in Soho. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> and tomorrow we look at three more. Ah, I forgot to tell you something really important because the reason why it's also like not safe, they love to raise prices every year. And last year they raised our price by a lot. Like when we renewed it, it was a lot. But I thought it's normal because it was my first year in New York and I thought it's normal to raise it this much. So I asked my friends like a few months after, I was like, wow, they really raised it like quite a lot. And they're like, that's not normal. Like it's not normal to raise it this much. So now I'm scared they're gonna raise it for the same amount, which in this case we would also move out because it's just too pricey for what it is. But yeah, fingers crossed. And I'm gonna take you with me. So we're gonna going on a little fun date, which is amazing, right? Yeah, I mean, look, look at my little cave. Oh, Ru, you're so cute. Ruzi, how are you liking New York? If you love New York, wiggle your tail. <laughs> Ru's so funny, she's just chilling. Hello, I'm Ru and I am watching out for this apartment. I am making sure that everything is good and I'm watching you.
spotted. Oh, that was bad. Guys, I didn't even show you the bathroom, but when I saw it, but you know, this is the so I'm talking about. The it's empty. Basically empty. The one basically. during the week. Yeah. So this was actually our first real visit with a broker who's a friend of ours because we were quite lucky when we got our place here. It was actually like a friend of a friend. It's a situation. friend of a friend thing because also the thing that I didn't tell you earlier, there is something called co-op, especially in Soho, which means that the whole unit, it, yeah. the whole building needs to agree on having you. So you need to apply. Oh, it's loud. I think we should pass this before. Okay, one sec. So. You need to apply and then everybody has to say yes and if only one person says no, you're out, right? I mean, it's a representative board, I think. Not everyone gets your application. It's like ah, okay. four people or something. But yeah, It's still, still annoying. They need to approve you. And, and actually, it, uh, no, the really annoying thing is that you need to reapply every year. Yeah. But we've been good neighbors, so... Yeah, I mean, but I told them earlier while I was getting ready that they still haven't confirmed the renewal. But I think it's not so much... Uh, but what if they raise the price again as no, much I as mean, they did last year? Then you have to be a good negotiator <laughs> and put them on the spot. Never split the difference. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so this was our first real visit with a broker and he gave us some ground rules. Oh so my yeah, God. What are the ground rules? I'm not sure if we can tell. Okay, so it's a secret. Follow us on... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> but it's green, white. It's white here. Oh yeah, I know. We go to this coffee place here. Which one? We're on Green Street, right? Yeah, but what are you Remember talking about? Remember the one we used to go back in the days um, where we had like the healthy food? Ah, uh, Dr. Smooth. Yes. Is it here? Or Smooth, yeah. Yeah, so uh, let's yeah, go okay. there. Yeah. Anyway, so... Jumping topics. Uh, I kind of want to tell them, but... Wait, why not? I think that's every broker in New York knows these things, no? Okay, also, like, who's gonna see this, right? Mwah. Anyway, he told us to, like, never show that you like something. Yeah, be like poker face the whole... I was so poker face, I walked around like this. Like super critical, always I'm like. So eh, critical, I'm like. Mm, no. Anywho, I feel more energized now. It feels good to go out. Now I told our friends that we were quite exhausted after today's meetings, and now I'm energized again. So it's really okay. nice to take a little break. I'm fine to do this meeting for you. Yeah, I think we need to be more strategic. Yeah, because and it's like, also a waste of time if both of us are in those yeah, meetings. Yeah, we need to divide and conquer. 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 So, okay, okay, let's go in. Do I film like this? Or maybe from above, isn't that cuter? Ah, maybe not. Okay. Um, here, like this, no? Here's your coffee. Ooh, I like that. Mmm. Yum. What are we doing now? I'm going back home because I have to shoot a project. So I'm gonna change. Yeah. I'm gonna pray that I will fit in the clothing. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and I wish you a project. I give you the full intel of Jürgen holding the camera, <laughs> but also the trash and so, you know, the yeah, beautiful. This is, this is how so we walk whole. around. But you know, it's so funny because as soon as there's a little bit less people, it's easier. It's easier. And also even so when cool people come, like the people in front of us are so cool. Oh my God. And I don't feel as awkward. <laughs> I do. Also, my arm gets quite I stiff. Think, I think it's always the person holding the camera. Yeah, for sure. It's looking like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually not the person talking. Also, we just walked by a whole movie set. So our little setup here. Yeah, do you know what they're filming for? Quite embarrassing. Not really. Do you know? No. Oh, my arm. If it's not... It starts with... to hurt. Oh, boys are such crybabies. What do you think how I feel filming myself 24-7? Yeah, how do you feel? I'm just kidding. It does get very exhausting. Uh, but it's so pretty. It is. All right. Is the police so we cannot no jaywalking? <laughs> How do you recognize New Yorkers versus tourists? They cross on red. New Yorkers jaywalk. Yeah. That's just a thing. I don't make the rules. Don't get mad at me. Yeah. True, true, true. You don't. How else do you recognize a New Yorker? <laughs> Doesn't have a camera in his hand. What do you mean? Oh my god, I know how. Like a New Yorker is on the phone, FaceTime, and walks by other people and says the most iconic stuff. Actually, at this place where I just got the smoothie, we once sat down for lunch, and this girl was like, Oh my god, I just got an apartment for three million. It's three million. But you know, this part, uh, I'm like, 
Oh wow, it's loud again. You're gonna actually wanted to know what's the best overheard New York that you've ever heard. So many, but I cannot remember. We hear so many good things. Sorry, thank oh, you. Oh sorry. We should have asked him to subscribe to our channel. Did he ask us to subscribe to his channel? Uh, no, not the channel, but like to some something like a phone plan. Oh, phone plan. Maybe it was a good phone plan. Oh, oh, thank you. Oh. Good way of <laughs> Thank you. What's your name? Luca. Luca. Hello. So nice to meet you. Hi. Enjoy. Bye. We were just talking about you yesterday. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. You too. Bye. That was vlogception. All right. We have to call Niels. Another business call. Because business never sleeps. <laughs> All right, guys. I love you. And I see you in a sec. How is everybody? I hope your life is as full as my platform. I just shot this look. It's so cool. But guys, I was so tired earlier. <laughs> I literally, after therapy, I just passed out. Was it just 20 minutes? How long were you gone? Uh, 20 minutes, yeah. It kind of felt like, it felt like one of these three hour naps. You know what I mean? But at therapy, we did something really annoying. What was it? Okay, so I got a notification yesterday. It said that my average screen time amounts to eight hours a day, which I don't understand because even when I do really, really, really badly, it's six. Like that's the worst for me. And now it's eight. Let me check for a sec if it's a bug. Oh, today, today it's three, so it can't be that bad. It even says nine hours? How do hell is that possible youtube for 11 hours there's no way guys i really think youtube was running in the background and that's what added like one and a half hours per day because i'm not that much on youtube especially not on my phone either way it's too much okay this is the point i don't want to waste my time staring away at my phone but the tricky part is i work on my phone so my therapist showed me this really annoying trick which it's so annoying my whole screen is gray and i told her because i had it three years ago if you're a long time follower you will remember because i posted about it but back then it was really hard to switch back so it was really really annoying when i had to actually edit something or post something but now it's really easy because there's a shortcut so you can switch it really fast <sighs> But the gray is so annoying. Every time I look at my screen, I'm like, ugh, it's so unpleasant to look at it. I don't want to look at it, which is the whole point. It's the whole point, okay? And also I'm at a point where I just, I really don't want to stare my life away. So I'm willing to be more present by phone. Even when I write a text message, I'm like, well, not no fun. And then, you know, you're in the real world and you're like, wow, colors are so beautiful. You know, what's also really funny. We recently talked to this woman and her kids are I think they're like 12 or 13 or something and she told me how her kids because now we, like gen z is it gen z or gen z you can say both i think you can say both it like depends whether you're in america or uk but i'm always confused anyway so i think gen z was the first generation that grew up with a phone and social media because i literally i got my first phone when i was like i don't know 15 and it was like this really old and shitty thing oh my god nokia 3210 never forget r.i.p and and she said that so her son is younger and her daughter is a little bit older and her son has seen the daughter grow up with social media and a phone and he found it so terrifying because it was such a like negative experience for the girl and honestly if you think about it I can imagine how awful it is when you're so young and you're exposed to so much online and there's all the comparison and I'm honestly so grateful that I didn't grow up with that but she she said that her son who's 12 asked to get a flip phone and you know what i find so funny i love how like each generation is a little bit the opposite of the next one you know what i mean like gen z was shitting on us millennials and now gen alpha will shit on gen z and then gen beta will do i don't know what i think we're in for right we are in for right anyway i'm gonna change but i want to show you my fit one more time oh, oh love it love it Okay, and then I take you around Soho yet again. Hey, ooh, we're at Italy. It looks so good, but it's kind of small, you know? Go further, no? Uh huh. I just want a snack. I think I want olives. I think olives are my go-to snack, or should we get like a small pasta? <gasps> Look at the cheese section, guys. Look, oh my goodness. Cheese, paradise, or... Oh. 
Oh my god, I'm so hungry. I was not so smart to go here when I'm hungry because I want to eat it. Ooh. Okay, but I want olives. Let's get olives. Oh my god, Jürgen, it's olive oil. <gasps> This looks so legit. It looks like more legit olive oil than... Guys, don't take me to an olive shop. Olive oil. I clearly have an obsession with olive. Olive everything. Should we get new oil or we still have some? You're gonna shake in his head. Oh my god, I need to remember this. So good. Okay, we continue our search for olives. <gasps> the sauce looks unreal. Ah, uh, I know why they say to never go shopping when you're hungry. I want it all. What if we have dinner before the dinner? I know what. Oh, I want it. But it's so strange. No olives. Oh my god. Oh, it's for the soup. Should I get it? Yeah. I love small. I love everything small. Do we need this? Nope. So strange. No olives. That's not a real Italian place. Maybe downstairs. There's a downstairs? Yeah. Where? Oh my god. Toothpaste. And I actually really like this brand. I don't need anything, but I want to buy it. Let's get out of here. Always so good to be surrounded with the voice of reason. Yeah, that huh? is an ugly screen. Yeah, again? Super ugly, black and white. How can you even have a screen time? I have none. Today it's been three hours. So don't talk to me unless you have less. What's yours, Jürgen? Oh, that's a good question. Do you want to hold real quick? Yeah. Gonna... You know, the weird thing about Jürgen is he's so much more on the phone than I am, but somehow he always ends up having less screen yeah, time. Yeah. It's not lying. And we have two Damn. hours and Check for last week. <laughs> I'm down 58%. Uh, how can I check for last week? <laughs> Why was I so high? Lol. Ah, it says productivity Lol. and finance. Someone's working with the phone. So you're gonna you're gonna copy me with the. Uh, you know the thing is I don't have a problem, so I don't see why I would need that. Well, self-awareness, you know, not everybody has it. Hasat. Not everybody has it. Jürgen, do you wanna know what else I learned today in therapy? Yeah, tell us what you learned. Okay, so so I've had goals for the last years. I mentioned it in the other video, but the old goals that I've had, I reached them. And I really had to ask myself, what's next? But because I've reached a lot of goals of mine, I feel very scared to make moves because I feel like I can only fall. So in a way, I need to liberate myself and be okay with taking more risks. Because what people don't talk about a lot is that... The higher the heel, the higher the feel. <laughs> Kinda, but it's true like and that's by the way, okay fine I read about it in a book and it was so true because when you've reached or you've accomplished some of your dreams and your goals and Then you become very scared to lose it and then you just stop moving So when you start out you actually have this amazing freedom and you have that sense of naivety Naivety? I feel like that word sounds really good in German Naivität. That's also when you think of music artists when they have their breakthrough. Oh my Most god, time, exactly. It's being said that the first album was the greatest because they have been free. Yeah, it's so true. Yeah. But that's but I something I really struggle that. with because I feel like I'm so not high up, but like I'm I've moved up and now I'm so scared to lose something Which that is obviously not true for Taylor T Swift. I swear, this is why Taylor is such an inspiration for me because she shows me that ambition is not a bad thing. And that's something I've been struggling with. And I'm learning to be okay to want more. I am learning to be okay with failing and taking more risks. And what's so interesting because my therapist was like, so what does taking a risk look like for you? And I was like, I don't fucking know. I literally don't even go there in my mind. I'm so scared of losing what I have. I, I become so careful. And when she asked me, I was like, wow, well, my mind doesn't even go there because that's how scared I am. Sometimes you need to lose what you have to get what you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I like that. 
I don't want to lose all that. Also something that I just made up. But also my therapist said, okay, so if you fail at something, what's the worst that's going to happen? And I was like, well, I'm going to lose my reputation. I don't like it. Big reputation. Big reputation. Uh, again, that's so inspiring about Taylor because she was just like me and then she lost her reputation and then she came back stronger. No, but I'm like, I, I'm afraid that if I fail at something, I'm going to lose my reputation. And she was like, you're not going to lose your reputation just because you failed at something. I was like, wow, this is so true. I'm going to work on that. And the beautiful thing is that I'm on YouTube now, so I'm going to document everything. And also one big thing that I like repeat is take more risks, take more risks. But even thinking about it gives me scary. Oh. remind me so much of my time in North Carolina. Just as a little update, our friend Brenda is visiting us, but it's so chaotic. I need to clean up real fast so she thinks we're always perfectly tidy. By the way, these are all books from Brenda. This apartment is Brandonized. Is it time to tell you about my time in North Carolina? When I was living in North Carolina, I lived in Greenville. I mean, Technically, I lived in little Washington and you know, so it was a high school exchange year and when I first got the letter, because you never know where they will place you, right? And I was just hoping it to be New York or California somewhere. I was like, or oh, Miami. And then I got the letter. Also note, I was like, I think 15. <laughs> and it said Washington. And I was like, Okay, I can work with that. It's Washington. It's not like my number one choice, but it's a big city. I like that, I can work with that. And then like a week later, I looked at the letter and I was like, this is so strange. Why does it say Washington NC? I always thought it's Washington DC. And then I realized a little Washington in North Carolina. And that's where I went to high school. And you know what? Up to this day, and I would say I've had some amazing years, but up to this day, it's been one of the best years of my life. I was so transformational. Everything was like in the movies. I think that's also why I'm so obsessed with like high school series, because it's just such a throwback to my North Carolina times. And I found such great people. I was so lucky. But also there was so much cliche, like in the best way. For example, the quarterback was dating the cheerleader captain and they both became prom king and prom queen. And also all that drama that was going on, it's literally like from the movies. I also think because of that experience, I'm so in love with America. When I got there and people are so friendly, people are so friendly, they would just start talking to you in the middle of the street. And it's like no intentions at all, they're just nice. They compliment you all the time. And again, bear in mind, I was then 16 when I went over and people would literally compliment me the whole time. Cause I also think they really liked like foreigners. I remember I was actually, I already had a diary back then. And in the beginning I wrote down every single compliment cause I couldn't believe people will actually compliment me. Like I never, never received compliments in Germany. Like that's just something you never do. Maybe nowadays you do it, but back in the day, never. So I started to write down every compliment that I ever received. And then after like a few months, I'm like, okay, this is getting ridiculous. And also I realized it's like not that deep, but it's still so nice. But yeah, I had the best time. Why are we talking about this? Oh yeah, because of these and my other snack obsession back then was late chips, but the baked ones. So good. Okay. Time to clean. I'm extremely efficient. Street.